Well, the primary recommendation is as it pertains to cancer care investments or how to finance cancer care. The starting point is always going to be domestic budgets, so governments investing in the health and well-being through focusing on health. Oftentimes we see this hope or ambition that external partners or donors will take on the cancer agenda, but really cancer has to be driven by government investments. So how can we work with governments to make sure that investments are sound, are sustainable, and increasing progressively to reflect the disease burden? As a starting point, we meet with governments. Governments convene a set of community inputs to understand where should we focus, what are the best buys, and from WHO and PAHO's perspective, what we've worked with governments to do is set, a, set priorities. So in most countries, as an example, HPV vaccination is an important investment as part of an overall commitment to cervical cancer elimination or cervical cancer screening. These are low-cost, high-impact interventions that government should prioritize. In addition to those, we also ask governments to continue focusing on treatment. Treatment doesn't need to be expensive, and it doesn't need to be complicated. What we talk about are what are basic packages that all governments can introduce in their context and considering their financial constraints. The second is that cancer should be seen as part of a national plan. It shouldn't be seen in isolation. So as we anticipate cancer burdens increasing, what are the infrastructure requirements and how can we start those infrastructure investments now? And then of course, what are the workforce needs? The last aspect that determines success in cancer is having community leadership. At the core of a cancer diagnosis is a person, a family, and a community. And if we spend a bit more time listening to their needs, we'll find that the cancer agenda moves a lot faster. So how can we root the cancer agenda through person-centered services and through community-driven change? If we can focus on those three aspects, financing, adequate investments and priorities, including workforce and infrastructure, and most importantly, focusing on community-driven change, we'll find that many of the challenges slowly decrease in number.